Hi everybody and welcome back. So this week I'm going to tackle a difficult topic, one that we don't talk about often enough in my opinion, so that's why I'm going to do it. So I'm going to start with a scenario. You've just found out you're pregnant, imagine that. And in scenario A, you're ecstatic, you've been planning for it, it's everything you wanted and you're really happy. So all I'm going to say about that is congratulations, it's a wonderful thing if that's what you wanted it to be. Take some folic acid every day for the first 12 weeks, Google your local hospital where you want to have your antenatal care and book yourself in before 10 weeks so that you have the right scans at the right time. And good luck. Now the other scenario is that it's come as a shock. You weren't trying to become pregnant or you were and things have changed and now you're in a bit of a pickle over what to do. And there are lots of decisions to be made. You need to think about things like what plans you had for the future, re-work, re-education, re where you live, what your social situation is, is it stable enough to welcome a baby into, what your finances are like, do you have a partner, do you have family support? All of these questions and all of these questions are unique to everybody. Different things have an impact on everybody. And it's how you weigh those up. And I would say this, speak to girlfriends, speak to any friends around you, any siblings, family members, your parents if you can, and just see what they say and what their reaction is, engage how much support you might have and whether or not this is something you can actually do. If you need to, you can go and talk to your GP or the practice nurse at your GP, or even go to a sexual health clinic all of these people can guide you and talk to you and listen and help you make possibly one of the most difficult decisions of your life and it really is. You can even go to services like the Family Planning Association or Mary Stopes or the British Pregnancy Advisory Service. They all have counselling services and they can all help you make this decision. So you're not alone even if you feel alone and I'm sure that many of you do at this really difficult time in life. So what are the options when you're pregnant? Well obviously one is to carry on with the pregnancy and have the baby. Then you might decide to raise that child yourself or you could even decide to have the child adopted if you really didn't want to go through termination but didn't feel you were ready to raise a child. But obviously one other option is to have a termination and end the pregnancy and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So. Ending a pregnancy is called termination or abortion and it's legal in the UK whatever your age. It's easy to arrange in most areas of the UK, it is more difficult in Northern Ireland and I will put some information on that in the description afterwards along with details of the Family Planning Association. Most areas of the country will have a direct referral so if you Google let's say Camden and termination services, so the area where you live, the borough where you live, and termination or abortion, you should get either the ability to phone a number and arrange it for yourselves or details of how to do it. If there isn't a direct referral service where you live, you can go to your GP and it's quite straightforward. It will just take one appointment, they'll ask you some information and then they'll either refer you directly themselves or they'll give you a phone number to call to arrange it for yourselves. So that's how you arrange a termination on the NHS, but some people decide to have it done privately. And if you want to do that, if you just Google abortion services in your area, phone the number, you can actually go to people like Mary Stopes, BPAS, and it'll cost you obviously if you're having it done privately, but the service is exactly the same as that that you would have on the NHS. For some people it's just more convenient to do it that way. So the question I get asked most often by people when I'm counselling them for termination of a pregnancy is, who will know? Can anyone see my notes? The answer to that question is only you will know if that's what you want. Your information can only be shared with people that you agree that it can be shared with. So not even the father of the unborn child needs to know if that's the way that you want it. Even if you're between the ages of 13 and 16, then Nobody needs to know, as long as the GP, when speaking to you, feels that you have capacity to understand what's going on, what the process involves, and what the ramifications are for you. That's called having capacity. And as long as the GP feels you have capacity, 
then they can refer you in exactly the same way as they would for anyone over the age of 16. So you don't have to worry about having to tell your parents, although a GP would encourage you to talk to your parents or another family member just so that you have support, but it's certainly not compulsory and they certainly can't make you do it. The other thing to know that is that GPs are allowed in the UK to object to abortion and not refer you or not take part. Having said that, what they're not allowed to do is leave it there. So if you did happen to meet a GP who doesn't want to take part in the process for you, what they have to do is facilitate an appointment for you with another GP who will sort it out for you. So you would never be left high and dry and you would always go down the referral pathway. There might just be one small blip. I don't meet many GPs who would do that, but in law they can, and I just wanted to let you know that. So when should you have this done? Well, I think the best advice I can give you is the sooner the better. Terminations are safest and easiest when you're under 13 weeks pregnant, and the rest of them take, take place mainly under 21 weeks pregnant. But the earlier you do it, the better for you and the better for the process. So to calculate how many weeks pregnant you are, the first day of your last period is day one of the pregnancy. So by the time you've missed a period, you're four weeks pregnant. So time goes by quickly. So just think about getting it done or getting the process talked about as soon as possible so that you've got time to consider everything properly and make up your mind without having time pressure on you as well. In the UK, termination after 24 weeks, which let's face it is six months, is very uncommon. But it is legal in certain circumstances. So if there was a danger to you, the mother, from continuing the pregnancy, or if something had been found wrong with the baby, it is still legal. But it's obviously more difficult. I say more difficult because it can be traumatic. It's not quite a straightforward process. It is a fully formed baby. And it can be very traumatic for you because you might have to give birth to that child, or you will have to give birth to that child. So that's why we say sooner is better. So what are the options in terms of the process? Well, there are two types of termination. There's a medical termination and a surgical termination. The medical termination happens earlier, before nine weeks, so that's why we say sooner is better. After that, it's a surgical process until it's much later on, and I'll explain that. So under nine weeks, this is called an early medical abortion, an EMA. The only thing that's used to end the pregnancy are drugs, so you have no surgery going on at all. So you have a medication called mifepristone. You're given that either to swallow or vaginally, and that cuts off the hormones to the pregnancy and essentially ends it. But it doesn't make the pregnancy come away. So two days later or so, you'll be given another tablet, again vaginally or in your mouth, called a prostaglandin. And that will actually make you start bleeding within about four to six hours normally. It can be quite painful and you can have cramps like a period. This method is sometimes used much later in pregnancy, but it can take much longer. You then have to give birth to the baby and you quite often have to stay in hospital overnight. Whereas in a pregnancy that's ended by medical means under nine weeks, you don't have to stay in, you literally go along, have the tablets and then you come home. Surgical terminations generally take place between about 7 and 15 weeks and that's a vacuum aspiration. So what that means is a small tube is passed through the cervix into the womb and the contents of the pregnancy are removed by suction. Sometimes you can put tablets into the vagina just to open up the cervix a little bit to make the procedure e easier and you generally will have a light sedation or a general anaesthetic for this so that you don't feel anything. The whole process takes about five to 10 minutes and generally you go home the same day and you won't know it's happening because you'll have the sedation or the anaesthetic. After 15 weeks, it's called um, a dilatation and evacuation, a D&D. &D. And this is where you have a general anaesthetic to put you to sleep for sure. The cervix, which is the opening to the womb, is gently stretched open and then forceps are put through into the womb and the pregnancy is removed this way. Any remaining tissue is sucked out like the other process I told you about, the vacuum aspiration. The whole process again takes about 10 to 20 minutes and generally you will go home the same day. 
Over 21 weeks, as I said, it's a combination of surgical and medical um, process depending on what's going on. So it's either a dilatation and evacuation that I've just described to you, or it's tablets again to end the pregnancy and to make you go into labour and deliver the baby. You need to be reassured that if you are having the procedure this late and you do have a medical termination, medication is given prior to stop the baby's heart. So you would never give birth to a live baby. And that's a question that I have had in the past. It takes time because your cervix has to open enough to pass the baby and you quite often have to stay in overnight. It does involve labour and delivery so you will have labour pains as well. So what are the risks during a surgical procedure? So the first thing to know is it's actually safer than having a baby for most women. It isn't risk free but then having a baby is not risk free. But the earlier you have it done the fewer risks there are. So bleeding or excessive bleeding happens in about one in a thousand women. But if you have that done over 20 weeks, it goes up to about four in a thousand women. Damage to the cervix is very low, it's about 10 in a thousand. Damage to the uterus, which is the womb, again is low, it's about four in a thousand. Damage to the uterus in a medical um, termination after 12 weeks is one in a thousand. And failure, so what we mean by that is the procedure doesn't work, is about one in a thousand. So the risks during a medical procedure, just tablets, are incomplete removal of all of the tissue, so that means some of it stays behind. And when that happens, you will then have to have a surgical procedure to actually remove it. And that happens in about five in a hundred cases. Failure of the pregnancy to be ended, so a continuing pregnancy, happens in about one in a hundred cases. Infection also happens in about one in a hundred cases, but we think that the infection was probably pre-existing. And then excessive bleeding or hemorrhage happens in about one in a thousand cases. So what are the risks after the procedure? So once you've had it done. So infection again, but as I said, usually we think that's pre-existing. And that happens usually in two weeks post the procedure timeline. So up to about two weeks, if you're going to get infection, you'll notice it then. It's treated by antibiotics, but it's really important if you do think you have an infection, so smelly discharge, pain in your tummy that's going on, fevers, you seek urgent medical help because the risk of not treating that infection is pelvic inflammatory disease, and that can damage your fertility in the future. And remain in tissue that isn't noticed at the time later on. And again, that would have to be removed by a surgical procedure. So bleeding after the procedure, what's normal, what isn't? So to bleed is normal. When you have a medical procedure, it, you can actually bleed for several weeks afterwards. When you have a surgical procedure, you shouldn't bleed for more than two weeks. And if you don't have a period within four to six weeks of either one of those procedures, see your doctor. And when should you seek help? Well, if you get pain in your lower tummy that's so severe that it's not being helped by normal painkillers, as I said, if you have vaginal discharge that smells or is an odd colour, if the bleeding is too excessive and you can't control it with um, normal sanitary protection, if you're just feeling generally unwell, if you have a fever. And how are you going to feel afterwards? Nobody can predict this because everybody is different. There's a whole gamut of emotions that you go through and they're probably going to change over time. So initially, some women are just really relieved because they were so worried. Um, some women are sad. Some have a mixture of both of those, sadness but also relief. A few women end up with long-term psychological problems. And I think the most important thing is to know that a mix of emotions changing over time is normal and to be expected. You've been through a lot and no one ever knows 100% what the right decision is. They don't even know that when they're pregnant, let alone ending in a pregnancy. So these feelings that you're having are not unusual. And I think the most important thing is seek help. So again, see your GP, see the practice nurse, go to a sexual health clinic, or look at the other providers around the Family Planning Association or the other providers for counselling. 
So long term, are there any side effects of termination? That's what most women want to know. Well, the answer is no. There's no effect on the ability to have a child in the future unless you have an untreated infection. So that's why it's important if you think you've got an infection to check it out. Even if it's only mild symptoms, check it out. Always better to be wrong than to miss it. If there's an injury to the cervix or the uterus during the procedure, that could affect future pregnancies. And there could possibly be a small increased risk of a premature birth in the future if the cervix is damaged. But in the main, most women don't have any problems after a termination and they go on to have successful pregnancies at a stage in their life where they want to have a pregnancy. Really important that you think about contraception immediately because your fertility returns immediately that you have the um, procedure. So you need to be protected again because the last thing you want is another unwanted pregnancy. So talk to the provider who's going to be doing the termination with you and they can sort out the contraception for you afterwards. You need to start contraception immediately after the termination, even if you think you're not going to have sex, because we all know that sometimes things just happen. So for information, and I'm going to put all of this in the comments afterwards, you can speak to the Family Planning Association, Mary Stokes, the British Pregnancy Advisory Service. There's lots of information online and I'm going to give you a link to frequently asked questions. The one thing I want you to know is it may seem like a taboo subject, but the one thing I believe fervently is that women have the right to have control over their own bodies. And having a baby is a massive commitment. It's an 18 year, I'd say more, my son is 28 and I think it's still an ongoing commitment as much as I love him. Darling, I love you. But if you don't want that commitment or you're not ready for that commitment or you don't have the support for it, you have a right to control your body. It's nobody else's decision. And in the UK, it's completely legal and it's completely confidential. So please, if you're struggling or you want information, go to the sources of information I'm going to put here afterwards and make the decision that's right for you and only you. Don't be pressured and don't feel guilty. It has to be right. And actually, a pregnancy is still more dangerous than a termination. So don't feel that you have to make a decision to have a baby when you don't want one. I hope that's helped and I hope it's given you information about termination and given you just some support if you needed it. Any questions, please ask me in the comments afterwards. I'll always answer them. And thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.